Hi guys, James at Rampant Line Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden, but we're going to head a bit north this time towards Stockholm, and we're going to return to a brewery who I have reviewed a good number of beers from before, but this is the first beer that I'm reviewing for you since they've changed their name and rebranded, so hopefully this one turns out to be quite nice. So for this review then, we are going to go just to the southwest of Stockholm to a little place called Ekeru, which was home to Nordic Kiwi Brewers, but it is now of course home to Northern Exposure Brewing Company. So this particular beer is called the Oh Dear. It's a 6.5% red IPA. They've added uh, pomegranates to it and also red beets and it's been aged over oak for a little while which should make it really interesting. And this was one of the three cans of beer that they released for the first time through um, Sea Stimbolaga on the 3rd, I think it was, the 3rd of March 2020 here in Sweden. They also had the Dolphin Love, I think it was called, which is one of their regular beers, and they also had a Brut IPA that they released as well, actually, along with this one. But the Red IPA was the one that really kind of caught my eye, actually, because if you've watched the channel before, you will know that I absolutely love Red IPAs, so hopefully this one turns out to be very, very nice. Uh, Nordic Kiwi Brewers, of course, kind of made their name by uh, brewing only with New Zealand hops, but that has now changed. There will still be a lot of New Zealand hops in their beers, from what I gather, but they are brewing with hops from elsewhere across the world as well, actually. So exciting times for this brewery. I was a little bit sad that they dropped the Nordic Kiwi thing because I thought that was a, a pretty cool name, but you know, as long as the beer remains good, then um, and business remains good for them, of course, as well, then. Can't really complain about it, but yeah, looking forward to trying this one. Nice to have a red IPA, and particularly one like this that sounds very interesting, and I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this beer as well. So let's see how we get on. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Nordic Kiwi Brewers before, and it'll also take you to my future reviews that I'll do from Northern Exposure Brewing Company because uh, this is the very first time you'll see these beers under that name but I'll play around with the tags and sort it out, you know, we'll do something like that. There's all the usual social media down there though anyway. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you that's being added to whenever I get the opportunity which is very very regularly of course and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about Northern Exposure Brewing Company slash Nordic Kiwi Brewers. So this brewery was originally founded as Nordic Kiwi Brewers and it's based in Ekerut to the southwest of Stockholm and the company was founded by two New Zealanders which were Craig Donovan and Karen Beatty and they started up back in 2014. So apparently they began home brewing because the Swedish beers they say are very expensive. I actually find them cheaper than buying craft beer in Scotland but hey ho and I would have thought actually that they would be cheaper than buying craft beer in New Zealand as well but they soon buy began buying hops from Nelson in New Zealand and they set up their commercial brewery in a room using equipment that they found mainly on Blockit which is basically the Swedish equivalent of like Craigslist or uh, or something like that you know it's a uh, basically an online buying sort of selling advertisement type thing it's if, if you live here in Sweden it is very very useful and um, but apparently Karen met his Swedish lady in New Zealand and the pair later moved to London together and he spent some time working in the construction industry before moving back to Sweden with her Karen worked full-time at the brewery initially while Craig was part-time and he also worked for Ericsson and the niche of this brewery originally was that they brewed their beers using all New Zealand hops as I said though that has changed but since 20 2017 both of them have been working full time at the brewery but in late 2018 they moved to a larger brewery in Ekeru and that year they brewed around 100,000 litres of beer per year and I think they managed to double that across 2019. They also hired another New Zealand brewer to join them and they plan in on installing a new and bigger brewing system in the brewery very soon. They might have done that already but I wasn't able to find any information on that actually online. But at the end of 2019 they also took the decision to rename the brewery to Northern Exposure Brewing Company and they'll also now use hops from across the world and not just New Zealand 
um, as I mentioned earlier on. So hopefully this will be a very interesting uh, time for them and they do well out of it. Like I said, I was a bit disappointed that they dropped the Nordic Kiwi thing, but they said that the reason for it was that Swedes just didn't get the idea, they thought the beers were all brewed with kiwi fruit and um, they didn't get the idea that you, you know, New Zealanders are known as uh, as kiwis but I don't know, I mean, if, I don't know if they could have uh, gotten away with that with, um, you know, putting a little statement on the uh, the, the cans and stuff like because it did say like, it was, what was it, it was um, was it Southern Soul, Northern Heart or something like that? They had, they did have something on the original um, NKB cans, but maybe they could have put a little kiwi bird as part of their symbol or something like that. So in some ways, yeah, I can see why they would want to change their, their branding a little bit. Um, but, you know, the Nordic, I, I have to admit, I am a little bit sad about them changing the name. But, I mean, as long as the beer uh, remains good, you know, that that's the main thing. And if they do a bit better commercially out of it, then that's not a bad thing for them either, of course. I'm just kind of nitpicking because, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the New Zealand hops. I've said that in my numerous um, NKB reviews before. There's also the Strangness uh, Brewery as well, the Strange Brewing Company who are run by uh, by a Kiwi and his Swedish wife, so they're definitely worth checking out too. I need to try and review a few more of their beers at some point as well. But definitely cool to have a kind of New Zealand orientated brewery here in uh, in Sweden. The New Zealand hops, as I've told you before, are absolutely beautiful. There's what is it, about 40 different hop varieties you can get commercially down there and you'll get some very interesting IPAs uh, if you go there. I really need to get back there at some point and just uh, explore a little bit more and try some more of the, the Kiwi craft beers. That's definitely one of the things that I really want to do at some point soon. But um, yeah, that's all you really need to know. We went a little bit off track there. That's all you really need to know about Nordic Kiwi Brewers and now Northern Exposure Brewing Company, a really nice brewery that I recommend you check out. And hopefully this beer is a nice introduction to the new uh, branding and things like that that they've done. So if you want to learn more about this brewery, check out the brewery website in the description below. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And of course, you can check out the Rate Beer Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to uh, to learn about all the different beers that they've done. So um, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork of this one before we open it up. So um, this beer, as I mentioned to you earlier, it's a 6.5% red IPA. Um, it was a collaboration originally with Bjorn Bernstrom and it was hopped with Nelson Sovine and uh, Taihiki, both from New Zealand. And um, it's got additions of pomegranates and red beets as well as being aged on oak for a little while. So Nelson Sovin is a hop that we already know, that lovely big sort of 14% alpha acid white green grapey type thing, but Taihiki was one that was new to me. Um, so apparently this hop was first released back in 1972 and it was bred from English Fugles and a Russian um, variety called Serebrainka if I'm pronouncing that correctly, and it was originally known as New Zealand Cascade, and it's known to give a really nice kind of bittering quality. It's got some lovely um, grapefruity characters to it, apparently, as well as a little bit of lime. And I have to say, I probably did have, um, you know, I probably did have a couple of beers when I was down in New Zealand that used the New Zealand Cascade, but I really don't know this hop very well. When it comes to New Zealand hops, you know, um, Waiiti is quite popular, and Motueka is very popular, the sort of limey hot Waiiti is the orange one, um, and Nelson Sovin is the main popular one. Every so often you'll come across things like uh, Rakao and, and some of the other hops as well. There's there, there's so many, there's Malteri, Mal Malteke, um, you know, there's so many different hops from New Zealand, it's really difficult to keep up, and I do like it that a lot of them have the, uh, the Maori names as well actually it is really quite nice but um, yeah that's all I really have to tell you about the beer so you can see the artwork on it is very very nice so without further ado let's get this guy out and we will get on with the taste and then I'm very curious to see what the pomegranates and the red beets and things do to this beer this one I think should be very very curious as I say out of the three beers that they released um, there was the Dolphin Love, I think it was called, and there was the, the Brute IPA, but and then there was this one, and you know, as I've told you before, I love red beers, and one of the best, one of my the beers that really gives me the most vivid memories, First Blood Imperial Red Ale from New Zealand, it's one I would love, to, I've never been able to find a bottle of it to review for you here on the channel, but that's one that I would dearly, dearly love to get a hold of, actually. 
Um, that's what, you know, I drank that in, I forget the name of the pub, um, I drank it in one of the pubs, the famous beer pubs in Auckland in New Zealand, and it was just absolutely beautiful. But um, yeah, as you can see with this one, um, you know, I love my red IPAs, and this one just looks, this one's even redder than a lot of the ones that I've come across before. If you hold this beer up to the light, it's a sort of combination between a sort of candied strawberry colour and also a you know, sort of coppery kind of thing. You could see there was about a quarter finger of a frothy, kind of almost ivory, pink, a pinkish tinted sort of ivory coloured head on this one. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass. You can see a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head there. But this beer is absolutely crystal clear, which is kind of surprising actually. But um, I don't know if they will have filtered it actually. And uh, I don't know if you kind of have to do that actually with um, with barley's beers. I don't, I wouldn't have thought so, to be honest with you. But, um, yeah, it looks very nice anyway. So, yeah, let's take a look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. I'm really curious to see what red beets would do in a beer. Oh, that's a really unusual aroma, actually. So, yeah, straight away with this one, you get the nice juicy pomegranates. I mean, the you can smell a little bit of that sort of vegetally, it's almost an earthy type thing, which I'm assuming is the red beets. I can't say that I've ever eaten red beets before, knowingly. Um, but you know, it, the beer, it really has that sort of herbally, vegetally kind of thing to it, which is quite interesting. It's I've really never come across that in a beer before. Um, but yeah, you get some juiciness from the pomegranates, and um, everything else I think takes a little bit of a back seat. I mean, you can smell a little bit of woodiness underneath it. Maybe there's a wee hint of uh, vanilla and things, which from the from the woodiness, the oakiness, would be expected. But really, it's the beets, I think, that are forming the linchpin of the beer. And the juiciness from the pomegranates takes centre stage at the front of the nose. Um, but like I say, a little bit of woodiness, maybe a little touch of vanilla. You can get some kind of grassiness out of the hops. There's a wee touch of earthiness in there as well. But... Maybe you can also pick out a little bit of the kind of white green grapey character from the Nelson Sovine, um, but I'm really not getting much in terms of the floral and grapefruity and sort of limey notes that you would expect of the the um, the Tahiki. I'm really not getting too much of that. Um, yeah, when you sugar this beer up, it gets more earthy and sort of vegetally. To be honest with you, it really smells more and more like the red beets. When you uh, when you sugar the beer up, so yeah, it's a lovely kind of juicy. Um, the pomegranates give it a really nice kind of juicy effect, but then it's sort of balanced out by the the kind of more herbally, vegetally sort of red beet thing. I'm really not sure what to expect from this. This is a really unusual aroma. Um, when I compare it to some of the other beers that I've had and you know I do like things like this but as I say I've never ever had a, a beer with red beets in it I mean the only thing I can think that might be remotely similar to that would be like some of these kvass things that you get in the Baltic countries you know those beers that are brewed using bread yeast and things you know I don't even know if it's a beer technically but um, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit so I'm really I'm not sure what to make of this one let's have a taste of it and see how we get on take a little bit of time to check out the aroma of this one because it is very very unusual actually um, but yeah let's let's go for it and see how we got on this one is the oh dear a red IPA with red beets um, pomegranates added to it and also um, aged on oak wood for a little while should be really curious Slanja, Skull, welcome to uh, my first review from Northern Exposure Brewing Company Skull Well, what I'll say about this beer, it works. It does work, actually. Um, I'll say straight away, is it the best beer that I've had from Nordic Kiwi slash um, Northern Exposure Brewing Company? No. Um, the last couple of IPAs that I had from these guys, the Tutti Frutti and the... Um, you know, the Tutti Frutti and I forget what the, what was the other one called, the Chaos and Clive, those two beers that I had, 
were very, very good, you know. Um, the Nordic Kiwi beers had always been pretty solid, but they weren't sort of pushing towards the next level, whereas the, the last three that I had from them were really pushing towards the next level. This one's more of a kind of quirky beer. And in fairness, it, you know, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this beer. Um, but I would have been more curious if, I mean, I didn't know when I picked this one up. Um, I didn't know there was all the adjuncts and things in it. And if I'd known that, I might have gone for the dolphin love sort of thing as an introduction to this. Um, so, I mean, this is quite a sort of quirky beer. It's not a red IPA in the traditional sense. I didn't expect it to be when I learned what was actually in it. But um, it is more... This one is more one of these kind of... You see that, that category that goes around on rape beer, the speciality herb sort of thing. This beer is more like that rather than a, a red IPA in my mind. Um, it would have been cool to see them actually do just a, a straight up red IPA, um, you know, age on wood a little bit, like do an imperial red or something with some of these New Zealand hops. That would be a really, really interesting thing. But like I say, um, it's a nice enough beer and it's drinkable, but if I compare this to the last three beers that I've had from from um, from Nordic Kiwi and, and things, this one, it's not quite on the same level as that, but it is, it's a decent beer, it's a decent beer. And in fairness, you know, you, I can see after I take another couple of sips of it and my mouth adjusts to it, it does grow on me a little bit. Um, but it's just it's just not quite as punchy and big and things as the other one. But I mean, when it's 6.5%, I'm sure Tutti Frutti was 8, if I remember correctly. So maybe that's an unfair comparison. Um, but if we consider it as a red IPA, it's definitely got a bit of the malty sweetness. It's got some of the more juicy fruits to it as well. It has got some of the things that you would expect of one of these um of one of these beers actually so yeah you know kudos to them for trying something a little bit different actually you know i do wonder would this have worked better as like a red sour ipa something like that making taking the beets out and making it a little bit sour that could have been an interesting move actually but yeah the beets almost they taste a little bit like beans or something like that um, you can really feel that across the middle of your palate so let's try and just break this one down a little bit um, so straight away with this beer you can feel the sort of woody quality that's what sort of takes over the middle of your palate on top of that you start to feel the woodiness kind of drying out a little bit and you get that sort of vegetally beany type flavour from the beets it comes out a little bit more towards the back of the palate but as you push further forward it gets a little bit more uh, vanilla like um, to be honest, you do get a little bit more of the sweet, the kind of sweeter vanilla towards the front of the palate. There's a wee bit of a kind of biscuity. There is a little touch of a biscuity caramel in the very centre of the palate there, but really that herbally vegetal thing from the beets starts to uh, to take over. It really does remind me of like it's almost like if you got a kind of mixed bean. Like in Japan, they they like to eat beans cold. You get the cold black beans, and they're quite nice actually. I quite enjoy them, um, and it, the flavour that you get out of this does remind me of that. And like I say, it's a flavour I enjoy. I'm just not overly convinced that it works in a, in a beer, to be honest with you. I mean, in fairness, there are breweries, breweries using tonka beans and things these days, and those work really, really well. And I wonder if that's maybe where they've kind of got this idea from. Um, so, I mean, maybe adding red beets into like an imperial stout or something could be really interesting. And these guys have never tried an imperial stout, from what I can gather. I don't think they've ever brewed I don't think they've even brewed a black IPA, if I remember right there, at least that I've tried. Um, so that's another interesting point to make about this um, this beer itself. The, the, the flavours actually do go well together a little bit, and I would say that this beer grows on me as I go into it. Um, you know, you do get a little bit of a biscuity, slightly caramelly sweetness in the middle of the palate of this one, but like I say, it's mainly the woodiness, the sort of vanilla flavours come out a little bit further forward. You get the red beety beanie type flavour towards the back of the palate. The sweeter notes coming further forward. A wee bit of a kind of biscuity, caramelly sweetness on this one. Um, and otherwise, it's um, it's all about the kind of hoppy and fruity side of the thing, really. So yeah, the beets do add a little bit of an interesting dimension to it. I think it's fair to describe this beer as being more quirky rather than kind of punchy as the other um, northern exposure ones have have been. So 
So yeah, um, in terms of the hoppy side of things then, if you go towards the back of the palette, you get a little bit of the earthiness in the back corner of the palette. I think that will be coming from the Taiki. If it's anything like the, the cascade you get from the States, you do get a little bit of earthiness out of it. As you come further forward along the sides of the palette, you can feel that just... It just becomes a little bit herbal. You get a wee bit of a floral note at the front corners of the palette. Then around the front curve of the tongue, it's a little bit lighter and more um, grassy. Then behind the front curve of the tongue, that's where you get that oily bubble where the juicy, fruity esters start to come out of the beer. But I will say that around the edge of the palette there, you do start to get these kind of juicy pomegranate flavours. Whenever you add fruit into a beer, it always sort of suppresses a little bit of the IBU, actually. And that's probably what makes this beer... You know, probably you have to consider this as a fruit IPA, you know, it's not, if we think of IPAs, it's not got this, the bitterness that you might expect from this style. But then, yeah, if you go behind that front curve of the palate there, get the oily bubble, um, you do get a wee bit, if you go towards the back of it, you get a little bit of that kind of darker, um, you do get a wee bit of that grapefruit, you know, what you'll get from Cascade, and as you push further forward on the... Uh, on the centre of the palate, on that front part of the palate, you'll get a wee bit more of a kind of, you get a little bit of a red fruity kind of note as well, which is um, which is interesting. Um, but you do get, in fairness, you do get a little bit of the lime out of this one. It's interesting that the, the, the Tahiki has that little bit of lime that the American Cascade doesn't. Um, that's an interesting point. I don't know what alpha acid um, Tahiki is actually, if it is kind of around the sort of 7-8% that you'd normally get from from the American Cascade. But I like the limey edge that this beer has. Um, you do get a wee hint of the sort of white green grapey thing from the Nelson Sovine as you go further into the aftertaste, but to me, that's not overly prominent in this beer, actually. It is more... Um, the, the focus in this beer really is more on the beets and the pomegranates and things like that. Um, so, yeah. This beer, I would say it's more of a kind of quirky sort of beer this one. I'm glad I reviewed this actually because it has, you know, it's taught me something and that's what you want from these videos. I always want these videos to kind of teach me something new about beer but if you like some of these Tonka bean beers I think I could, you know, um, you could really enjoy this one and it is cool to see them trying um, you know, a few experimental things but with the New Zealand heritage that these guys have I'd love to see them have a go at some um, New Zealand hopped sours or some uh, you know, black IPAs and things like that, and um, that would be a really interesting thing. But to try something like this, I think is is quite interesting, and I would be curious to know where the inspiration came from. But um, yeah, it's a nice introduction to um, to Northern Exposures, uh, Nord Nordic Kiwi, sort of new brand, if you like. And uh, I've enjoyed tasting this one. So I'll, I'll enjoy. I don't know if I would get it again right enough, um, when some of the other beers are on offer. But, um, yeah, it's been cool to try this one, I have to say. So kudos to them for trying something a little bit different. If you are a fan of tonka beans and stuff like this, you will enjoy it. I think if you're a fan of more kind of savoury umami type beers, you will quite like this one. So, yeah, um, in terms of the mouthfeel then, I'd say that this beer is kind of mid-bodied. Carbonation is very smooth. It's quite an oily mouthfeel, to be honest with you. Um, in terms of hoppy bitterness and things, it is. I would say that this one is quite. You know, it must be about there. It must be about twenty-five, twenty-ish IBUs. It's really not very high in terms of its IBU count. The malt base, like I said, um, it doesn't actually feel too malty because it's the woody smoothness and the, the sort of kind of drier note from the beanie. Yeah, the sort of beanie, beety type flavour there. It does get a bit drier towards the back of the palate. There's a wee bit of sweetness further forward and a bit of oiliness in the middle of the tongue. Um, and you do get some nice juicy fruity qualities, both from the hops and from the pomegranates. But the fruitiness feels a little bit more kind of oily, in my opinion. But an interesting beer, this one. And I'm glad that I was able to review it for you here on the channel. So, um, yeah, let's just leave it at that for this one. This one was the Oh Dear. Um, a red IPA, it's 6.5% brewed with um, with red beets and uh, pomegranates and then aged on oak for a little bit. My first beer 
from Northern Exposure Brewing Company, of course, previously Nordic Kiwi Brewers. So, um, yeah, an interesting one, this, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed my take on this beer. So, um, yeah, thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from Northern Exposure as well. I will try and see if I can review the Dolphin Love or whatever it was called. I think that's going to be one of their flagship beers, so I'll see if I can get that reviewed for you soon. But it was interesting to review this one, and I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. So, um, yeah, thank you again for watching. I'll catch you guys very soon. Slanja, Skull, make sure you check out Northern Exposure Brewing Company, formerly Nordic Kiwi Brewers in Ekeru, near Stockholm, Sweden. Cheers.